So we have Veer Munshi, who is going to be sharing his views uh, with us. Veer is actually one of the most prolific uh, sculptors or artists in India. Uh, he's somebody who's a Kashmiri and a displaced uh, Kashmiri. Uh, and he has a certain view on uh, uh, what do you call how, how things move. And uh, so this is where he's going to be sharing his views with us uh, today on visual dialogue on conflict and uh, development. So Veer, over to you. You have exactly 19 minutes, please. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not an economist star to calculate the time and money and all that. I'm an artist. So I might be wrong a person in a worker's paradise may sound that. <laughs> uh, I'm also putting the time. I may begin with uh, verse, some poems, some lines. Kashmir shrinks into my mailbox, my home, a neat four by six inch. I always loved neatness, now I hold the half inch Himalayas in my hand. Said the bard of Kashmiri Aga Khan, Said Ali Khan, in his poem, Postcard from Kashmir. I can tell you how true his words are. I can tell you how powerful his words were to our ears. Those of us who had been banished from our own homes and sent away to live in exile, I actually, I can tell you how relevant were the poets of India struggling to tell us about life, love, loss, loneliness, and so on. My story should begin at the beginning when India came into being after the great devastating partition. Based on two prominent religious sects, Hindu, and Muslim. I should also tell you that I really don't know where to begin. Since my work is mostly a visual dialogue on Kashmir, a state caught in conflict. These are some of the works I have done during my exile period, early exile in 90s to address this issue from my perspective. Through, through various mediums and materials, as I believe every medium has limitations and possibilities. Paintings, sculptures, installations, and so on. I must thank you for having me here today. I'm glad to be here in Stanford to share my life's work with you. I identify as a Kashmiri artist in India. So I think it is best to begin with the Partition Museum in Delhi's Ambedkar University, which is recently built, where at the very entrance, I have staged a bright red horse, Zuljana. It also carries colorful skeletons on its back. I had to reimagine Zuljana because as a child, I attended Moharam in Kashmir. I had learned that Zuljana was Prophet Hussain's devoted horse, who after his master and his family were slain at the Karbala war, was still searching for his master. He was seen wandering the field of lamentation. He's a mythic, iconic presence for loyalty and loss. Now he occupies a special meaning at this partition museum, which I should let the viewers engage with. Partition affected several areas of the country till this day. As I stand before you, I, I stand as a witness to its affectation, especially in Kashmir. My work engaged deeply with the various facets of conflict and violence, where I present an aesthetic of consciousness and steering the socio-political reflections to questions, power, honor, and events. At the same time, I beseech my viewers to engage with economic and social empowerment programs or opportunities through the arts and crafts movement, which has become a central to Indian arts today. I am, of course, proponent for the cause and my art, which is highly influenced or even borrowed from the paper mache traditions of Kashmir, refers to the upliftment recurs in the region of India, in fact, many regions of India in these sectors. My interest in architecture 
and history actually begins in 2008 when I wanted to return to Kashmir to find the house I was born and raised in, 15 years from the time when I had left my home ground. This was a way to reconnect with my roots, but when I got there, I realized that there were many similar houses that stood abandoned. I needed to document them because soon enough, they would be demolished for purpose of gentrification and their history or existence would fade away. I decided to capture them in their most earnest states, so I ventured into photography. This was my way of creating an artistic engagement with the archives too, where if not the entire history of these Pandit-owned properties would be available, but its essence will be remembered, perhaps someone would elaborate on their stories one day. I never found the house I was looking for, but I found my roots in, in a state of abandonment, since a lot of my practice is a means to return to my lost home in Kashmir during the Hindu Pandit exodus that took place in 1990. These houses too signified the devastation left at the wake of the partition. That's mostly how I look at the unresolved conflicts in my state. My periodic visits took me to the, these sites to document photographs of these houses, which were, similar, which were familiar to me with a lot of memories attached. The task was doubly complicated one to restrain from inflated own suffering and the other memory of cultural lifestyle that has been irretrievably lost. But nevertheless, I kept going back in different seasons to document this ongoing archival body of work. Art is an extension of oneself, so I have been expressing my felt experiences time and again. One of my project memoirs based on terrible flood occurred in 2014. All channels of communication were blocked. I had no way to find out about the people I knew in Kashmir. In an absolute state of dismay and fear, I began to draw portraits of these people. The barber who had shaved my beard the butcher who had sold me some meat, the lady who had offered warm tea, the neighbor who lived across my friend's house, my friend who accommodated my impromptu plans, and so many others. As I thought of them, I drew them, hoping to safeguard their presence in my memory. And a year later, with the same thought, I made a large installation of a fallen house for India Art Summit in 2015. The house was created out of wood and it had the latest design on the windows, which remains shut, showing a strong gush of water carrying a life and property flowing outside the window. The the dissolution and desperation of the people is seen on woman's face, who holds her hands against her ears to show how she witnessed the calamity, but finds it hard to comprehend or even reason with it. Again, I felt the need to memorize my roots in other ways, and this time, I created a space to bring artists of Kashmir together after 30 years of separation. An old abandoned industrial building in Srinagar stood waiting for this reunion, which accommodated at least 60 artists from all over country and other parts of the world. Some of these people were meeting for the first time after their departure from their homeland in 90s due to political upsurge. Interestingly, the night before the day of the event, there was a heavy downpour that literally threatened the entire day's plans, and I was certain that most people would not turn up. Eventually, people did come, 
and they sat together to memorize and celebrate the, their Kashmir. This was one of my installations placed inside this building to show time and the plight of the valley. It was staged as a maze where people could walk inside it and it would come to a point from where moving in any direction was not possible. This was a commentary on daily life. I want to go back to history where I can refer to Kalhana, one of the oldest historians of India, and he mostly concentrated on the history of Kashmir's rulers, Raj Tarangini, in English means river kings. An epic narrative in Sanskrit accounts the history of two million rulers of dynasties. In this narration, we are exposed to the wealth of intelligentsia of ancient times, when the potentates would patronize the arts, literature, and architecture as a sign of peace and prosperity in their kingdom. Later in the 14th century, the Islam religion spread through Mir Sayyid Ali Shah Amdani, a Sufi preacher from Persia. This again added to the cultural practice which is evident till this day and relevant to my art. I took inspiration from this religious milieu in Kashmir that had borrowed a language in uh, making these shrines. architecture of all who had ever graced the land with their practices and created this magnificent shrine and architecture out of wood. The coffins inside carried colorful skeletons made of paper mache traditions. The structure of the shrine clearly shows the influence of religious architecture such as the pagoda from the Buddhist temples and the latest work from the Islamic mosques. I curated the space around the shrine for other artists too, to create an interactive experience where I could draw a strong statement on Kashmir, which translates to the cultural pride of Kashmir. Hospitality and debates are all important means to exist. And that is the soul of this place. But before one could enter the space, one had to go through the scrutiny of the security guards. Staged by two performance artists, this worked as a commentary on the ongoing political vigilance associated with Kashmir. A lot of my art documents the practice of violence. The shrapnels, which I found heaped on roadside. I also I gauge with the poets of Kashmir from the 14th century to present times and made some of these collaborative installations with them. It's also a tribute to those poets from Lalda to 14th century to present Aga Shahid Ali and Iqbal and other poets. The shrapnel which I found heaped on roadside and became a source of inspiration to demonstrate conflict, pain, and events of violence. Their shapes and existence intrigued me, made me look at their aesthetics. After all, beauty has a history of violence and the history of monuments of his India have presented that in so many ways. So I set out to create an aesthetic language of this violence to expose their deepest impacts. I still found the Kari Kalam Kari details very intricately woven to my visualizations. This is when I began to look at the larger picture, where I realized that due to the various upheavals that ruled the Kashmiri consciousness, economic and social empowerment never really found a place here. The high arts in India clearly found in its own niche, where artists were supposed to have more academic and global engagement, which resulted in the modernist moment in India. During the 2015, I felt a shift in my art. Something was drawing me to look at the vernacular art form and engage with it, to find ways to help create awareness for the living traditions. It wasn't just about the art anymore. It was also about the artisans, craftsmen, who were now looking for ways to earn their living. 
lack of respectability for their practice had already made their next generation move towards other professions. My art became a tool to intervene in this shift. Perhaps my art grappled with creating a platform and a newer language in the same art form while it looked at the plight of our lives. At the same time, I wanted to bring attention to the endangered animal endemic to Kashmir, the hangul, made of resin and fiberglass and surrounded by cityscapes made of plastic, became a sign of the threat that hangs on our lives. Became my tool to voice my concern regarding gentrification and loss of lives. I placed several sculptures of the hangul in various cities in India, while also marked the pores migration while engaging with the craft making skills in India. I gathered my lifelong work and set out to create a message of health and healing, images of caste, carigars, or craftsmen, and intellectual featured in my art. They represent events and stories of peace and resilience. This collection provides hope for the future while it also speaks of the ongoing arts and crafts movement in India, as a result of our longing to return to our roots or to even rethink our collective journeys. It intends to stage a counter-violent discipline to look at historicity and political divides. This time, I also include the famous Kashmiri carpets in my work, promoting the aesthetics of the woven product in cut out wood for canvas. The painting on top recreates an engagement with the Kari Kalamkari traditions, which in the ancient times were painstakingly placed on architecture. Lastly, I do want to offer more positivist view for the immediate artistic expressions, which are futuristic and compassionate. As much as my art has explored pain and violence because of my own displacement, my art also explores the value and strength of art as a collective sphere. I do wish the future and those who indulge, who venture into the arts, a very enduring and thoughtful experience where one is not afraid to speak or share one's mind. As we part, let me share my love for the mystic poet of Kashmir, Laldet, with you, where she says, Aami pan sadras navichas laman, kaiti boys mewan dai, meti di taar, aamen taken panan poan chum shraman, zu chum brahman gargat sa. That translation is here. Thank you. <laughs>